Good morning, you lovely people. Welcome back to part, you no, know, to day three of Hadrian's Wall. Uh, it's just gone past seven in the morning. We've woke up quite refreshed. It's safe to say we were beat yesterday, uh, but we've had a good eight hours kip. Some of us better than others because other people had nice comfy mats, <laughs> and I lay, was laid on this. All these digging in my side all night, but I still got some kip. The weather's looking okay at the minute, the sun's trying to break out. There's a couple of little niggles, but me and Paul are in this little woodland, quite sheltered. The wall walk is literally just on the side of that wall there, but Paul was there, and I was there, and as always, guys. Leave no trace. But yeah, I think we're about ready to make tracks. And see what today's adventures bring. And we'll be definitely bringing you back for Sycamore Gap. We're literally maybe 10, 15 minute walk before we can start to see it, I think. So yeah, bring you back at Sycamore Gap. I said I'd bring you back. We're at the Sycamore Gap. Just there. Unfortunately, didn't do this walk in time to see it in all its glory. But there is signs there of it uh, growing back. It's uh, sprouted new growth. But some mindless idiots decided to cut it down last year. But yeah. Whew. We're going to crack on, get some more mileage in, bring you back shortly. However, the wall is getting more and more sparse. Right guys, we've we'll come to a spot that has featured on the video before. over that way to that woodland for a boffy camp and I was joined by Daz and Andy Bewley and the Cumbrian lad outdoor Paul I've done two nights there and the lad's only done one but if you want to see that video just scroll down and you'll see me in a boffy out in green it's just on the Pennine Way this is where the Pennine Way splits from Hadrian's Wall right guys we had a, a cracking little stop probably about a mile or so back there Kind of cold, kind of fun to bottle of water and a good 10 minutes rest. Day oving. That first kind of cut didn't touch the sides. But uh, we're closing in on Sholliford and the signs of the wall are pretty sporadic compared to what we had several miles back. But this is the first bring you back when we hit Sholliford. Right guys we're about two miles from Colliford and in my head I'm now thinking if there's a cafe I'm diving in that cafe and then I'm going to have a nice big mug of tea. I'm having an all-day breakfast with extra mushrooms and extra hash browns if it's possible and then followed by an ice cream or a milkshake. What do you mean followed by? You put it on the same plate Dan. I probably will put them on the same plate. Saves on washing up. But that's what's in my head. That's what's keeping me going for the next two mile. The thought of a full English. So, I'll bring you back in two mile. Either I'll be smiling with bean juice around my mouth, or I'll be crying because I'm not having a full English. So I'll bring you back then. Just at the George Hotel in Charlotteford and have some food and a few drinks I think. Guys we were just finishing up at the George Hotel in Charlotteford. I had chicken mushroom pie with broccoli, green beans and mash 
and gravy ball had chips locally sourced sausage and gravy a couple of drinks and we set our plan with we're going to try and get we're doing another eight and a half mile we're going to robin hoods in where you can camp there we we'll leave adam in the wild the man and the legend is meeting us there so it's now coming up two o'clock we're hoping we can plod these out yeah hopefully plon it get it done in about three four hours eight mile if we can do it in three i'm buzzing four happy with four but yeah what a little view this is the people swimming in the sea in the river and we'll be going across that bridge very shortly but yeah what a cracking little spot so going on what a lot of locals have said very rare we'll see much more of the wall now we'll just see little remembrance of it but yeah what a day so far we've done 10 just over 10 mile so we can do another eight and a half and that'll push us on to do for 23 tomorrow to finish buzzing right right guys we're looking to be about four mile maybe a bit less from our final destination of the day and i'm not gonna lie the feet are killing me but surprising the rest of me feels all right legs are good shoulders are good hips are a bit chafed from where i've been wearing my fanny pack bump bag bump bag fanny packs what the americans call it we call them bump bags it's ideal all your bits and pieces right there oh yeah so we're looking we reckon we should get there no later than half five hopefully uh, these do serve food but I don't think I'm going to be eating but I might have a pint or two uh, we spoke with Adam it was Adam's first day at work today and he's messaged us saying if we need him he can come out but he's uh, struggling to find a spot to charge the car so we've said to him not to worry him when we catch him but he's there if you need if we need him so appreciate it mate yeah you see the end of this field just been past another trig point that's the third of the trip so hopefully it's downhill now sit see what looks like a big city straight ahead of us so that's got to be Newcastle Puh fly right guys that's me back in my tent end of day three just been in the robin hood inn had a couple of beverages and food i had leek and potato soup followed by a cherry cheesecake but it's time to get back in the tent rest the feet ready for an early start tomorrow and we've got 24 miles to do tomorrow so we're going to set off at seven our first stop our first target really is what we're aiming for is hitting on the wall hopefully get there find something to to have a sort of breakfast cob or whatever and a cup of tea so bring you back in the morning lovely people welcome back to day four we're just leaving the Robin Hood's Inn. We were just in this field here. Uh, trying to be a bit quiet because obviously people, there's quite a few other campers in there asleep, so I didn't want to wake them. But yeah, we had a good night. Dined well in there. In the box, in the Robin Hood's Inn. The food was pretty good. I only had a soup and a cheesecake, but it was divine. Paul had sausage. Had a good night's sleep. You 
can get breakfast there, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to get back on the track now. Right, guys, just over a mile in for today. We just come past Loch Ness. Hey, not seen a Loch Ness monster yet, but this is one of the. Uh, ah! But we have seen the Yeti. There's one thing I was looking forward to seeing on this walk was Loch Ness, so I can tick that off the list now. Right. Yeah, we're setting a good pace for this morning. It's baking hot. It's been over about an hour and a half, five, five and a half miles in. We're about to hit, heading on the wall very shortly. I'm hoping. I might be able to find somewhere, a little calf or something, to get some breakfast. <sighs> Tea room would be nice, hopefully, if the ears want it to open. But yeah, after that, we're about nine miles from the centre of Newcastle. And then another, I think it'd be another <laughs> seven to Wall's End. Well, right guys. Uh, we're about to set back off. We've just stopped here. We had our breakfast pit stop, got the sandwiches, bottle of coke, I had a milkshake. Ready to fuel us for the rest of the day. What I'm reading is this from H Hetton on the wall to the centre of Newcastle's nine mile. And if that's right, that's a beauty because then, I mean, we might even find a Weatherspoons. I don't know if I'll be able to persuade Paul to pop into Weatherspoons when we hit Newcastle. You never know. What do you reckon, Wild Paul? horses wouldn't stop me from getting in, mate. <laughs> might have to get in there for a pint and uh, some halloumi fries. Do like my halloumi. Squeaky cheese. Squeaky cheese. And a crumble. Cheese and a crumble. Together? Yeah, why not? Why not? You only live once, don't you? But yeah, it looks like we've got nine mile before we hit Newcastle. So I think it's going to be, I think, fields and then we'll be hitting civilization. So it'll just be road walking, path walking, which is a bit tougher on the feet. But really looking forward to getting to the finish of it now. We're about 13 mile in. Feet and legs are hurting. But we got by the river. That's got to be the tyne. You know what Gaza said about the tyne? Fog on the tyne is all mine, all mine. Fog on the tyne is all mine. Oh! <laughs> if it wasn't so polluted, I would go for a dip. But I don't think I will. I'll come out green or brown. That sign there is saying we're five and three quarters away from Newcastle. We're 11.7 miles in. 10.52 miles to go. It is baking hot. We're just stopping for a quick water break and we're having a couple of snacks. We're having some squishies. And I'm a life size. Look at that. <laughs> you can't tell which one's an arm and which one's a squishy. Luckily my legs are okay. I think most of it's just dirt. Looks like the walking poles are packed up now. Because I think it's just going to be path all the way now. Looking forward to getting Newcastle. That's our next target, Newcastle. We just went past a pub there. Guess what? And it was shut. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not desperate enough to wait round for 20 minutes for it to open. But yeah, looking forward to getting this one finished. 
feet are in bits legs are feeling tired this would be my third multi-day hike in two years and I can safely say there was talk of hit of the West Highland Way next year that ain't happening I'd even said I might try and do a lightweight walk this year after this I think get the walls end these boots are coming off and I'm throwing them in the bloody river I'm retired you'll only ever see me hanging in a hammock or chilling in my bobcat sat going up any fells anymore I'm done no more walking unless I'm within a mile of where I am I ain't camping done I ain't walking anywhere done you come and camp for next weekend no <laughs> I'm gonna go to Lavoo though That's are we oh, you just, oh are we are we coming to Lavoo and so should you get yourself to Lavoo on the farm the best bushcraft show there is yeah, if you get if you want to get yourself to Lavu, I don't know if this video this video will be out on time. You can get tickets. It's in Winsthorpe. Loads of like-minded, brilliant people. Live music. You'll get to see this man on stage. This idiot on stage. Third year running. Talking waffle as usual. <laughs> this is probably his last year on stage because I don't think he'll have anything else left to talk about. Right guys, so we've got eight miles left to go. Uh, we've just been past the Scran van, picked up some more water. I was running a bit low, got me and Paul a nice cold fizzy drink, get some sugar. I'm not lying, I was tempted by mushroom omelette with cheese in a butty but I fought that urge I think I'm regretting it now but we'd be still at, at the Scran van now and not on our way so these little sacrifices but yeah definitely starting to see Newcastle in the distance you probably won't be able to see it on the camera but we're looking forward to getting Newcastle. Yeah, and then on the Walls End. You see in the distance there, we're coming up to the Green Arch. That's a bridge. That is a symbol of Newcastle. Used to be on, but well, it is on the Newquay Brown bottles. Used to be on the Newcastle football shirts. The people of Newcastle are proud of that. And I respect that, but what they need to remember is that's built from Borough Steel. Because Brit because Borough Steel built the world. Sydney Harmer Bridge, Dorman Long Steel, Middlesbrough. The most famous bridge in Newcastle. From Middlesbrough Steel, remember that. <laughs> Right guys, we're still walking Quayside. And this path seems to have been going on forever. But we've only got two miles left to go. And our pace, I'm guessing for 35 minutes it should take. But the body is screaming now in pain. Every step is like walking on broken glass. But, just thinking of that end now, and what achievement it's been. So, I'll bring you back at the finish line. Right guys, it has been a grueler. But, we're here. Come on, mate. let you go. No, you first. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, Dan's very kind of let me go first. I was going to touch it first. Here we go. I can finally say, Hadrian's Wall, done and washed it, mate. Done and washed it. And I couldn't have done it without camping down. I don't think I'd have got you on my own. Hadrian's Wall, done and washed. 
a little summary it is 84 miles the hardest 84 miles I've ever done probably 20 of them consist of seeing an actual wall but I can gladly see I've done it and I ain't ever doing it again what a walk couldn't have done it without Paul absolute legend so there are only two technical ducks I've ever done the Cumbrian Way and the Hadrian Way there's a bench here and I'm going to sit on it Hello you lovely people, yeah after a couple of days of rest at home I've been able to reflect on what me and Paul actually done and achieved doing Hadrian's Wall, you see it was all in all over 89 miles we done, that's over 165,000 steps, so we went across Cumbria and Northumberland uh, seen some absolutely beautiful sights at the end of the walk my feet were in bits and I said I'd never do a multi-day hike ever again but after a couple of days of rest at home that's obviously changed and I'm already planning at least one or two next year uh, maybe might get one final one in by the end of this year who knows but I don't know what what it was that, like you say, I'd done coast to coast earlier this year and I never had as many problems as I did with my feet as I did on this one. So maybe it might have been all the road walking, but my feet, not really, I had one or two blisters, but the pain on the sole of my feet was unreal. So, let's say I was wearing proper socks, 1,000 mile socks. Uh, I'm thinking I might ditch the thousand mile socks now and go to Bridge Dales. But reflecting on what we've done, it was a fantastic trip. And I think the only thing looking at it, I'd have liked to have took a bit longer, especially the middle section of the wall where there was a lot more history, where obviously we would just head down and we would just walk and we, it'd be nice to have maybe spent a bit more time looking at the the museum and stuff but it is what it is uh, yeah anyone looking to do this walk highly recommend it I think it's very very well signposted uh, Paul had the map on his watch didn't really use his watch that much a couple of times where there was diversions and stuff like that but the, the path is so well signposted yeah, uh, plenty of spots to eat along the way. Shame, a few of the little villages we went through, the pubs were closed. But, but like I say, we were self-sufficient. We had enough food in, on us anyway if, if we couldn't have stopped in any of the pubs. But yeah, uh, obviously I want to thank you for watching a two-part Hadrian's Wall Walk. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one.